Hey guys, in the last video, we installed Flex and Bison, we installed the syntax highlighting for Flex and Bison in Sublime Text, we understood the code files, and got it running on a sample file. That was the brains of the application. Now, we're going to create an interface where users can choose their sample file. This is going to be done using Java Swings. Some may think that this is a good choice, others may be like, Java? Really? Really? Java? Java? What? Java! I'll be using other languages like Python for future videos, but for now, let's just stick to Java. What? I'll first show you how to run this on the Eclipse IDE, and then we'll see how to do the same on the command line. This project has three classes. SSMain, that contains the main function, the MyFrame class, which has the window frame, the file chooser, and the rest of the UI, and a listener class, which listens to mouse events and performs the execution of the output file. Take the output file generated from the compilation of lex.yy.c and y.tab.c and put it into the project directory on the same level as the source folder. Before I move any further, I'll just gloss over the two main classes here. MyFrame and Listener. The MyFrame class extends the JFrame class and inherits its properties and methods. We use the J panel to give a nice background to the app. J scroll pane will be used to display the error message. J label is used to display any text. We'll be using it to display the full path name of the sample file chosen and also the text on the button. J button is used to actually create the chooser button. In our constructor, we set and initialize the size of the window to be 500 by 500 pixels. We then instantiate all the elements I just discussed. In the create GUI method, the components are added and positioned on the screen. At the very end of this method, we add a mouse listener for the J button we just created. The listener is actually the listener class, which I'll explain now. The listener class has three major mouse events, a mouse click event, a mouse enter event, and a mouse exit event. When the choose file button is clicked, a file chooser opens up where the user selects their sample file. Once the location of the file is chosen, we execute the typical output command that we used in the terminal in the last video. The response is stored in the message variable and is displayed on the screen for the user to see. Set border color creates a red border and text if an error is displayed. Otherwise, the text and border color are both green. The other two mouse events are just used to give a hover effect on the choose button for a nice UI. And that's all the code for the GUI. Now let's run this thing with four sample files. Okay, so the first file gives an error on line 12, duplicate identifier man found. This is correct. We have an integer man after declaring a function with the same name. Now let's try the execution with the second sample file. We get an error on line 7, syntax error, unexpected semicolon expecting identifier or array identifier. This is again correct, as after we put a comma, it should either be an identifier or an array identifier, and not a semicolon. Now on to the third file. Sure enough, we get error on line 1 an invalid token hyphen. This is once again correct, as f hyphen is not a valid identifier type. Identifiers should only consist of alphanumeric characters and an underscore. 
Now let's try the last sample file. And here we have no errors. This is right again. There are no errors in this last sample file. And like that, we have a neat user interface to accompany our little interpreter. If you want to execute this program on command line, go to your terminal and enter your project directory's source folder. Since our main class, ssmain, is in the package p, we compile it with the command java c p slash ssmain.java. This will generate the corresponding class files. Now, execute it with the command java p dot ssmain. And clearly, everything works the same even without Eclipse. This will certainly come in useful for people who think Eclipse, NetBeans, or any other Java-specific IDE is too slow. If you jump straight into this video without watching the others and ignore the link to the previous video at the beginning of this video, then um, yeah, go back and watch the last video. I've explained everything there. Everything! Everything! <laughs> <clears throat> In any case, I hope you guys like this video, and please subscribe to my channel. Please. For the love of God. Please. In my last video, I asked for 10 likes. This time, I'm gonna be a little greedy and ask for, that's right, 13 likes. Yeah, 13, baby, come on. Let's hit that unlucky number. If we hit this number, I will give my 13th liker a year's supply 